So this video covers macros, which allow you to automate repetitive tasks in Microsoft Excel to save you time. Before we get started, let me mention, if you want to follow along, a link to the sample file is in the video description. So to illustrate macros, imagine this scenario. You work at a bank and each week you get a report from your database that provides you updates on consumer loans. And it shows things like the amount of the loan, the term or length, the interest rate, the income of the consumer and the purpose for the loan and so on. Now the problem is when you get the file from the database each week, you've got to make lots of changes to it to get it ready for reporting. And those are things we want to automate using a macro. So before we can create a macro though, we've got to add the developer tab to the ribbon in Microsoft Excel. The way to do that is to go to the file menu and then at the bottom click on options. You should see a window that appears and you want to click customize ribbon and on the right hand side you'll be able to check developer. That adds a tab to the ribbon in Microsoft Excel. The next thing we want to do is record a macro. That's going to get everything started. So let's give our macro a name. We'll call it Loans Report. And then we'll give it a description. So if we pull this file back up later, we remember what this macro does. Okay, now you should see the Stop Recording button. That means that Excel is now tracking every mouse click you perform. The first thing I want to do is change the font. I don't like it the way it is, so we're going to go ahead and change it uh, to Calibri. Now what I want to do is format the header row so that stands out. So I'm going to make the text bold, and then I'll give it a uh, blue background with white text. And now what I want to do is take all of the columns that are in dollars and convert those to the currency format. So that's the loan amount, the installment, the annual income, the total payment, and the last payment amount. Now what I'm also going to do is delete the home ownership column. That's not a column that we use on a regular basis, so we'll go ahead and delete that because we don't need that in our reporting. Now the next thing I need to do is to create a new column called debt to income. So this is your monthly payment divided by your monthly income. It's going to help us determine how risky a borrower might be. So I'm going to take my monthly installment, the amount I pay or the consumer pays each month for the loan, and then divide that by the annual income divided by 12. So whatever they make on a monthly basis. Now, right now it's showing us as a dollar value. We've got to change that so it's a percentage. The debt to income ratio should be a percentage. And I'll take that formula, drag and drop it all the way down. And then I want to sort my data from the highest debt to income ratio to the lowest. Okay, now you see that the values are sorted in column C there. The next thing I'd like to do is to change a term in the loan status column. Rather than it saying delinquent, I'd like it to say charged off. So I'll use Control F and then click the Replace tab and replace and change the language. Now to make that charged off term stand out even more, I'm going to go to the Home tab and use Conditional Formatting. I want any time I see charged off for it to appear in red. So I'll go to Conditional Formatting, Highlight Cell Rules, and then Equal To. And I'll go ahead and type in charged off when that appears. And the final thing I want to do is take my columns and auto fit them so they're the proper width. 
Okay, now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and stop recording and take a look at my macro. So I click on the macros button and I should see loans report, my macro up here, and it tells me what it does. I'm gonna click edit and the code appears. So this code captures every one of your mouse clicks. And just by looking at it, you might be able to tell what some of it does. And so look at this line, with selection.font. This is the start of a section of code that changed our, the font of our table to Calibri. Then down below, there's another section. We changed our header row to bold. And there was another section a little below that where we changed certain columns into the currency format. Now, you don't have to make adjustments to the code, but one thing that I do suggest is to add comments to it. This isn't actually code that's gonna run, it's really just for you to remember what the code performs. The way to write a comment is to use a single apostrophe and just write out what the next section of code does. So in this case, change the font of the report. And then I'm gonna go down, and then after the end with, after that section of code, I'm gonna create some returns. And then in the next comment, I'm gonna say format the header row. And then after the end with, a little farther down, I'm gonna say format or change the appropriate columns into the currency format. So you're just adding notes for yourself. So if you pull the code up or pull the file up a few months from now or years from now, you remember what it does. Now what I've gotta do now is save the file, but I've actually gotta save it as a different file format because it's got a macro inside of it. So instead of saving this as an Excel workbook, I have to save it as an Excel macro enabled workbook. That allows the macros to be saved in the file. Now I can close my code window and we'll practice this to make sure it works. So we'll go to the week two tab and then we'll click the macros button and then we'll run our macro to see if it works. There we go, it looks like we're good to go. Hopefully this helped to demonstrate how powerful macros can be. Even in this example, we only automated a few tasks, but imagine if you have 50, 100, or 200 tasks to automate, it can make your life a lot easier.